This video is about allocation in managerial accounting. About 40% of what you do is just allocations. You do it for factory overhead, you do it for budgeting, you actually have a chapter called allocations. In financial accounting, you do it in the fixed assets chapter and when you get to revenue recognition. So I went to Kohl's the other day and I thought I would use this as an example to just explain what an allocation is, who might use it, and Kohl's is one that uses it. If you're not familiar with Kohl's department store, it's just a department store. And the more you shop there, the more they give you Kohl's cash. And Kohl's cash basically is just a coupon that you can use at a future visit. So if you spend so much money this week, next week when you come back, you get a coupon for $5 or $10 off. Brilliant marketing plan because it keeps you coming back and you always spend a little bit more than the Kohl's cash. I went and I bought some shoes on sale for $29.99. What a bargain. I also bought a pair of pants that were on sale for $9. And then I got a shirt and while it was $16, you also notice they never ever charge you that $16. Those were on sale for $9.99. So I got myself a whole outfit and I had $15 of Kohl's cash. So when I checked out, this is what my receipt looked like. And notice there's no $29.99. That's kind of those two subtracted for my shoes. The $9 is nowhere to be found and neither is the $9.99 because what they do is they take your Kohl's cash and they allocate it among the items that you buy. And that's what these little discounts are. I actually had a $10 and a $5. That's how my $10 Kohl's cash got allocated. And that's my $5 Kohl's cash. Complicated little receipt for three little items. I thought it was a good way to really explain what they're doing and how you might use it, even if you're not in accounting. You're just going to Kohl's and wondering what they're doing when they print out their receipts. So over here, I've got my shoes for $29.99, the shirt was $9.99, and my pants were $9. If I paid the stated price, the ticket price, I should have paid $48.98. What you do to allocate, I've got this $15 coupon that I have to allocate across my three items. I need to take my $29.99. I need to know what each item is as a percentage of the total that I should have paid. The $29.99 divided by the $48.98 is the percentage to be allocated that goes to the shoes. Little item, if you hit the function F4, it puts these little dollar signs around your cell. And then it will always go back to this 4898. So it makes it easier to copy if you're using Excel. So that's about 61%. I'll do this one as well. So my 999 divided by my 4898 is 20%. Since I use those dollar signs, I can copy that down. Then I can sum this. And since I've got the split screen, you can't see the auto sum. If you hit Alt equals, that will do the sum for you, as long as you don't have spaces in your rows. Make sure that's 100%. That's the discount. And that's the really key to the allocation is you want to take this $15 and allocate it, divide it among the items based on, in this case, their ticket price. So what percent this is of the total is what you want this $15 to be. So once you get there, you take your 6129, multiply it by that 15. I'm going to hit my F4 so I can copy down. Sum those up, make sure that equals $15. The amount that I should pay for those shoes would be the $29.99 minus my discount for $20.81. If we look over here, it's $20.79. They've got some kind of rounding going on. Now here I can copy this down. Don't want to use the F4 at all because I always want it to be in that row. I want to sum that up. $33.98 is how much they charged me. And again, you always love Kohl's because I saved $68. Don't believe that, but again, it keeps you coming back. They're great marketing. If you're happy, go on your merry way. I'm going to go through a couple other ways you can get there that's a little bit shorter. What we could do is instead of doing 
so many calculations. I can just do my discount all in one time. This number divided by the total, and that needs to get multiplied by whatever it is you're trying to divvy up. So we're trying to get this $15. Of all those numbers, which one would I want to put the dollar signs around? Hopefully you said the $15 so I can copy it. And obviously I did something wrong here. Which other number do I have to hold still? I said I did that on purpose so you could be yelling at me. I also need to keep that 4898 the same every time. So now let's try to copy that down. Be careful on your homework managers. Sometimes they tell you to round, so you get the numbers that match there. Sometimes they tell you don't round. I need to sum that up. And yes, there's my 15. Now I can do my subtraction again and get the amount that I had above. One last way to do it, which is what we'll do for a lot of things in managerial accounting especially, is instead of figuring out your percentage, we look for the discount per dollar spent. You take the ticket price, we divided it by the total, and we multiply that times the discount. You can move these around, and we could take the discount divided by the total and take that times the price. You get exactly the same thing. We're just the advantage here is if my discount's always the same and my total's always the same. So everybody always spends $48.98 and they always have a $15 coupon. I can come up with a discount per dollar spent and use that instead. So if I take the $15, divide it by the 48, I come up with 30, 30 cents worth of discount. If I put that in here and I copy that down and I multiply it this way, I'm going to get exactly the same for the discount. All right. Why is that important? Well, what you're going to do in 90% of the cases and especially managerial accounting, we come up with an amount per dollar. So when you do your manufacturing overhead, you know what your total manufacturing overhead is going to be for the year. You know the total amount of items you're gonna do, and you'll come up with a cost per item, and then you multiply it by the number of items. It's a little easier in those situations to come up with this manufacturing overhead rate and use that as you progress through the year. You'll do this in financial accounting when you buy a building with some land and maybe a parking lot. You're going to have to allocate the total purchase price to the various items that, that you're going to depreciate. That's all there is to it. Just thought this might be a little different way to think about your allocations.